Hello and welcome to Every Woman. I'm Shudi Ghosh. This week, six years since the fall of the Taliban. Have things improved for Afghan women? Living with breast cancer, one woman describes her daily struggle with the deadly disease. And they shoot, they score the Egyptian women who bend it like Beckham. Under the Taliban, the women of Afghanistan were seen as victims of oppression, banished to their homes, unable to work or even to receive an education. The US-led invasion of 2001 was supposed to have changed all that. Women now have seats in parliament and a new constitution enshrines equal rights for all. But is that really the case? Have women been liberated or are they still prisoners of a backward society? Well, sadly, our investigation reveals precious little progress in the new democracy. In a 2001 radio address, US First Lady Laura Bush announced that military gains in Afghanistan meant women were no longer imprisoned in their homes. Many people wanted to believe this was true. But for most women in Afghanistan, their lives are still no better than under the Taliban. And for many, they're much worse. In a country where 50% of women are married under the age of 16 and only 10% of women can read and write, education is often seen as the key to empowering the next generation. But the nation's schools have emerged not only as the solution, but also the battlefield in the fight for women's rights. Education has become a perilous business for both teachers and pupils. These young urbanites in Kabul are busy embracing every opportunity that comes their way in education, public life and shopping. But the situation for women in the cities bears little relation to the rural areas. Here, women face the highest rate of maternal mortality in the world. Every 30 minutes, an Afghan woman dies in childbirth. Few health clinics are able to provide the care needed to prevent problems during labour. And amidst all this, there's also a hidden enemy, opium. Drug addiction is on the increase amongst women, and in the absence of modern medicine, it's widely used as a painkiller. Mothers give it to their children to stop them crying and help them sleep. When President Karzai said that 25% of the seats would be reserved for women in Afghanistan's new parliament, women were hopeful for change. So why is the situation for many women here so very desperate? Partly it's because Afghanistan has been traumatized by decades of war, and partly because of the resurgence in conservative forces. Many of the women who've spoken out have been ruthlessly silenced. Afghan radio boss Zaki Azaki and broadcaster Shokiba Sanga Amaj were both killed earlier this year for daring to speak out in public. Rights campaigners say the focus on women's issues like addiction, maternal mortality and violence has been lost, overtaken by concern for the increasing security threat and the ongoing war against drug trafficking. Well, let's examine these issues further. I'm joined from Kabul now by Haria Masadek from the Human Rights Research and Advocacy Consortium and Dr. Masuda Jalal, the former Minister for Women's Affairs. Welcome to both of you ladies. Haria, if I can start with you first. Uh, everyone assumed that after the fall of the Taliban, things would quickly get better for women, but that hasn't happened, has it? Yeah, definitely after the collapse of Taliban regime in 2001, uh, the situation of women in Afghanistan have been changed. And uh, lots of women did return back to work and uh, lots of girls did return back to school. And uh, th th these were the uh, tremendous changes in the life of the Afghan women after the collapse of Taliban regime. But unfortunately, this was only the changes for the families and for the women who were having these opportunities uh, before the uh, Taliban regime. And they were having the chances to go to school and to go to the work. And uh, it, 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 it didn't include the majority of women who were uh, really living in the rural areas and who were uh, never having the opportunities to get to school and to get back to work. OK, Masuda, if I can come to you. Politically, we know things are better. Women now have seats on parliament. Um, but 
are women actually wielding any political power? Uh, some achievements uh, politically took place, like uh, women took part in the cabinet, uh, in, um, of course in uh, a very little percentage, and uh, also then uh, women could take part in the parliament uh, with the support uh, of positive and positive discrimination that was given in the new constitution of Afghanistan. So we have about uh, 90 women in the um, um, parliament of Afghanistan right now, which is a historical achievement, which is good for Afghans. Uh, it seems that the government of Afghanistan is forgetting uh, their uh, promises and their commitments in Bonn conference, uh, in uh, Tokyo, London, and Berlin and conference. Sudo, why are the government forgetting the their promises? Why is this happening? Why are the government forgetting their promises? Basically, it is a coalitive government. It has uh, come forward or it is created based off a uh, coalition with warlords. And uh, also these days that uh, uh, Taliban are invited to come and join this government. You know that the anti-woman elements uh, will be um, uh, added to the political power day by day, which uh, women will pay the price. We have uh, many uh, highly educated women uh, capable of doing uh, better than the men that we have right now in the leadership of the country. And uh, if we women of Afghanistan, uh, we um, see the government of Karzai is uh, uh, going forward with uh, making the women participation colorless and uh, restricted. If we see that uh, uh, the government is trying to um, put off or turn off the little light uh, that uh, was created to Afghan women in the Bonn uh, conference. Or okay, well, is, let me put uh, this to Horia. Let me ask Horia. Um, a lot of promises were made, Horia, about, uh, for example, education. But why hasn't that led to more of a change? The international community and Afghan government itself is most of the times focusing and uh, talking about the figures that they are having about the rates of the enrollment and having more than a million of the girls in school, which is a big achievement and at the same time it's a big um, uh, uh, change to the life of the Afghan girls. But at the same time, everyone is forgetting first the big uh, rate of the dropout of the girls from the school. And second, they are forgetting about the half of those girls that are at the age of the school age, they are still, uh, they don't have the chance and opportunities to get education. So these are the biggest problem and uh, we are facing currently in the country. And uh, the strategies that are in place for having more female teachers, for building more e schools, they all need more commitment from the donor sites as well. And th there's also, um, very worryingly, still high levels of violence against women and many cases of uh, women committing suicide. I, I mean, are, are those concerns being addressed? Definitely, yes. You know, uh, because uh, in the Afghanistan, after the boom conference and collapse of the Taliban regime, we were very much hopeful by having men and women entitled of equal rights in the Afghan constitution, and also by signing the CEDAW convention by the Afghan government in 2003. These were the positive uh, signs for the Afghan women. But unfortunately, after the passage of the years, we have seen no changes in the life of the women. For example, it's still the rates of the violation against women are very high and still the law enforcement officials doesn't see themselves obligated to protect the rights of the woman in the country. If a woman goes to police, the police never helps a woman who is a victim of violence and it, violence itself is always considered in the uh, law enforcement officials' offices as a personal matter, and it shouldn't bring out to the public. Uh, Masuda, you talk about male domination. I know that you ran for president against Hamid Karzai. Do you think you would have made a difference if you'd been president? Would things be different? I would have brought so many changes and we women, Afghan women, would have been uh, so much forward than what we are now. Of course, a woman president with a, um, a gender balanced um, cabinet and political leadership in a country would have made uh, um, uh, a big difference than what we have right now. Okay, well, ladies, we do hope that efforts like yours will make a difference. Uh, we do apologise for um, some of the sound problems we've had on that interview, but thank you both very much indeed uh, for speaking to us here on Every Woman. Coming up, it may be a game of two halves. Now the other half are playing two. Women footballers are causing a stir in Egypt. 
and we meet the female referee who takes no nonsense from male players. We'll be back in a moment. <laughs> 